everybody. This video is about the do-it-yourself divorce. This one's going to make me really popular with the ladies. <laughs> okay. This video is not intended to be used to break up families. Uh, we should always try and work out our differences, especially if sons and daughters are involved. Sometimes it is out of our control. There are many men in Canada who are victims of the divorce industry there, whose sons and daughters were stolen and they have no access to them. Some of them have told me, you can't hurt me any more than has already happened. I'm a stone. This video is for those who do not want to be a victim of these bail priest bar members and their divorce industry. These uh, bail priest bar members in, this, in their divorce industry break up families unnecessary. Uh, it works together with the prison industry and the divorce industry. They both work together. It creates the prison industry, break, creates broken homes, and then, uh, and then the broken homes create juvenile delinquency and all sorts of crime. And every way you look at it, these bail priests are making money. Uh, the broken homes create business for the prison industry. There's juvenile delinquency. There's all sorts of future clients for the prisons. Creates forced clients for the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, the bail priest bar members make money from the prison industry and the divorce industry. It's all a big money-making scam by these bail priests. And the sooner we figure it out, the better. And matter of fact, in my opinion, most of them should get to do that little dance they do at the end of a common law rope. It's all dependent upon the government being bankrupt. That's right, people. More money for the bail priest bar members. It's all dependent upon eliminating common law. It immunize, it immunizes the bail priest bar members from their just reward, which is that little dance they do at the end of a common law rope. Uh, this is a Supreme Court case, Pulliam versus Allen. There is no common law judicial immunity. It's all dependent upon fake money being circulated because nothing is paid for. At common law, only gold or silver were legal tender. When you, you did it, okay, you did it. When you ran down to get the marriage license, you invited the government into your marriage. Many preachers tell you you need a license before they'll marry you. Well, obviously, that preacher is a preacher for a satanic church. If you want to get married in a satanic church, then expect the government, the bail priests, to be involved in your marriage and expect the bail priests to own your children. Watch my churchianity videos. All of these so-called churches, or most of them, are Baal priest temples. They're Satanists. So, let's get into what the courts are saying, huh? These kangaroo courts. A marriage license is a license or permission granted by public authority to persons who intend to intermarry. And then if you look up, this is all found in Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. I mean, every edition is going to have the same stuff in it. Intermarriage. See, miscegenation. You know, they, these, these bar members that put these law dictionaries together don't want to make it easy. They don't want to be too obvious. Miscegenation. Mixture of races. Ma marriage between persons of different races. So technically, that's who's required to get a marriage license. So a license. What is a license? The requirement for the payment of such licenses is only a mode of imposing taxes on the licensed business. And the prohibition under penalties against carrying on the business without license is only a mode of enforcing the payment of such taxes. 
the recognition by the acts of Congress of the power and right of the states to tax, control, or regulate any business carried on within its limits is entirely consistent with an intention on the part of Congress to tax such business for national purposes. U.S. Supreme Court. A license is a contract is a right given by some competent authority to do an act without which such authority would be illegal. The instrument or writing which secures this right is also called a license. A license is express or implied. An express license is one in which a direct, in direct terms authorizes the performance of a certain act as a license to keep a tavern by public authority. An implied license is one which, though not expressly given, may be presumed from the acts of the party having the right to give it. So an implied license is a filing fee in one of their kangaroo courts. Okay, that's an implied license. It's an excise tax is what it is. And so you get an implied license. There are three parties to a marriage contract. The husband, the wife, and the state. For this reason, marriage is denominated a status and certain incidents are attached thereto by law which may not be abrogated without the consent of the third party, the state. And that's a North Carolina case. Marriage is a civil contract to which there are three parties, the husband, the wife, and the state. Minnesota case. The state is a party of interest in every marriage contract. That's a Florida case. The legislature in dealing with the subject of marriage has plenary power. Okay, people, that means military dictatorship. As marriage differs from ordinary common law contracts and is subject to control and regulation by the state. Civil rights under the 14th Amendment are for federal citizens and not state citizens. Federal citizens, as parents, have no right to the custody of their infant children except subject to the paramount right of the state. And this is all coming from UNIDROIT. UNIDROIT stands for Unification of Private Law. Okay, this is Law Merchant. The website says that 63 countries have adopted it and is it designed to be automatically implemented. Canada and United States have been signatories uh, uh, of the Unidroit Treaty for over 30 years. Unidroit website says nothing about Texas or Arizona or any of the American states or the Canadian provinces. Therefore, Unidroid application in the American states and the Canadian provinces is only in federal areas. Unidroid covers negotiable instruments, civil procedure, civil liability, secured transactions, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, anything related to marriage, divorce, and children, municipal law, much more, way more. Okay, I'm not going to cover the uh, most of it. I'm just going to cover the stuff that's related to marriage here today. This is their website. If you notice at the top, well, we'll get in closer. Overview, Unidroid International Institute for the Inter Unification of Private Law. And the stuff here that's related to marriage is not there, but down here... It talks about legal status of women about two-thirds of the way down. Maintenance obligations, just underneath that. Okay. Movement of persons. Civil procedure up towards the top. Civil procedure. Contracts in general. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, it goes on. This is under the Unidroid Org. Let's move in closer. Um, and the middle one is the one that uh, I want to talk about. It's the 1958 Convention Concerning the Recognition and Enforcement of Decisions Relating to Maintenance Obligations Towards Children. So that all falls under Unidroit. Canada and the United States are signatories to the Unidroit Treaty. As of this date, 63 countries have signed on. The Unidroit video, uh, see the Unidroit video for more information. The unborn are not included within the definition of person as used in the 14th Amendment. 
So that's why that they can murder their unborn children? So are you a person? A sovereign is not a person as far as the statute's concerned. A person is a variety of entities other than a human beings. A person is foreigners and not citizens. In common uses, the per term person does not include the sovereign and stat uh, statutes employing the word are normally construed to exclude it. A sovereign is not a person in a legal sense. You know, back in the 90s, there was a guy by the name of, what was his name? Had, had to do with the uh, Gold Antitrust um, Committee, G-A-T-A, -A, Gold Antitrust. I'm not sure what the last part of it meant, but anyways. And, and he sued the government for um, um, basically um, antitrust, okay, for manipulating the price of gold. And you know what the government's response was? That it doesn't apply to us. <laughs> so they admitted, yeah, we're, we're rigging the price of gold. A sovereign is not a person as far as the statute's concerned. That's the bottom line. Residents. Uh, residents, as distinguished from citizens, are aliens who are permitted to take up a permanent abode in the country, being bound to the society by reason of their dwelling in it. They are subject to its laws so long as they remain there and being protected by it. They must defend it. That's where the draft comes from, okay? So, so um, that's where the draft comes from. They have only certain privileges which by the law or custom gives them. Permanent residents are those who have been given the right of perpetual residence. They are a sort of citizen of a less privileged character and are subject to the society without enjoying all of its advantages. Their children succeed to their status for the right of perpetual residence given to them by the state passes to their children. And so that's all about the slaves. The Law of Nations, that's found in the Law of Nations by Vattel. Book 1, Chapter 19, Section 213, page 87. One does not necessarily become a non-resident by absconding or absenting himself from his place of abode. <laughs> it's all in what you tell them. If you're ignorant, okay, then you're going to be a slave. These people are Satanists. Slavery is their business. This is the D.C. Code, an act to establish the Code for the, uh, of Law for the District of Columbia. And in Chapter 56 in Section 1617 at 31 Stat 1432, it says the legal estate to be in the Sestake use. Okay, that's what a person is. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the Constructive Sestake Trust of the United States, Inc., under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. And that's Congressional Record, June 13, 1967, pages 15,641 through 15,646. Now, if anybody has ever looked, you know, don't be coming looking to me saying, oh, I can't find that site in that, in that uh, page 15,641 through 15,646. Hello? Okay, have you ever looked at the Congressional Record? Okay, the print is really small. There's, there's, there's a huge amount of stuff in there. That is obviously a summary. Every taxpayer is a Sestake trust, having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. It might be correctly said that there is no such thing as a citizen of the United States. A citizen of any one of the states of the Union is held to be and called a citizen of the United States, although technically and abstractly there is no such thing. The privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States do not necessarily include all the rights protected by the first eight amendments to the federal constitution against the powers of the federal government. Did you know that? That's U.S. Supreme Court. The only absolute and unqualified right of a U.S. citizen is to residence within the territory of boundaries of the United States. See that word residence there again, okay? <laughs> Citizenship is a political status and may be defined in privilege limited by Congress. The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress.
In doing this, I shall have occasion incidentally to evince how true it is that states and governments were made for man, and at the same time how true it is that his creatures and servants have first deceived, next vilified, and at last oppressed their master and maker. A state like a merchant makes a contract, a dishonest state like a dishonest merchant willfully refuses to discharge it. And that's Chisholm versus Georgia, 1793. That's back when we had real judges. It's all about slavery, okay? A person is a slave. Either you're the king or you're a slave, and there's nothing in between. If you participate in their color of law statutes, then you've agreed to be their slave. It's only involuntary servitude that's not lawful. All of this is brought to us thanks to bar member bail priests. You can learn more about bar member bail priest Satanists in the bar members videos, one, two, and three, in the peace officers videos, in the martial laws hair video, in the kangaroo courts, one, two, and three videos, and there's other ones. I always talk about these wonderful bar members. All of this is brought to us by bar members both off the bench and on the bench. This is part of the bar member bail priest fire the bar member bail priest campaign. The, motiva the motivation of the de facto so-called judges is not for justice. They couldn't care less about justice. The best, the absolute best you can hope for is the appearance of justice. These bar member bail priests intend to create business for their so-called court, to justify their existence, to create work for their bar member bail priest buddies, to collect more royalties in support of their million dollar retirement, to get promoted to the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court, and then they can really collect the royalties, to create work for their buddies by they create work for their buddies by making their decisions as cryptic as possible, by forcing the issue to another hearing, by ignoring the law and thereby forcing an appeal. Okay, that's all about making money. They couldn't care less about justice. Do you want to place the future, uh, uh, your future in the hands of a whore that's bought and paid for by these crown pigs in Canada, the U.S., or elsewhere? You don't think the crown pigs are in the U.S.? Read the Definitive Treaty of Peace of 1783. Do you want to place yourself in the hands of a judicial whore who is intent on converting you into a ward of the court? That's an imbecile. Do you consider yourself Christian? Do you try to follow the golden rule? Do you want to treat other the way, others the way you want to be treated? Do you think that you're going to get any sympathy from God on Judgment Day when you have not done everything you can to put a stop to these satanic whores selling their justice? All judges are foreign agents of the Roman cult. Watch the bar member videos 1, 2, and 3. This idea of separation of church and state was really about taking Christianity out of the government and displacing it with satanic Roman civil law from the Roman cult. All so-called court cases are actually satanic religious ceremony by priests of Baal. Under the guise of the separation of church and state, they've taken the Lord's Prayer out of the schools, taken Christian symbols out of the courts, taken Christian symbols out of the schools. They've converted our Christian government into satanic government. It's all been done by court rulings from these priests of Baal masquerading as judges. At common law, the jury has to be your peers. At common law, the jury calls the witnesses, questions the witnesses, determines the law and the facts of the matter, and even pronounces sentence if necessary. At common law, the jury can disregard their statutes, which is called jury nullification. They can say, that's a stupid law, so we're going to ignore it. At common law, the jury can do literally anything it wants. At common law, there are no prisons. That's why common law is so severe. That's why it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. 
because they're not going to put you in jail. If you go and cause injury to someone, you poke out somebody's eye, they'll just poke your eye out and then everybody goes their own way. It's that simple. All prisons are commercial. Most of the people in prison are there for victimless crimes. We need to fire these bail priests and end the tyranny of this de facto United Nations courts and their Roman cult whores selling their justice. Our court is only a jury of our peers and we're all being denied it so these judicial whores can populate their prisons and collect their royalties. That's exactly what's going on, people, and the sooner you figure it out, the better. When governments collapse in countries like Libya, the first things that happen is they kick all the prisoners out of the jails. All jails are commercial. So, back to the topic of discussion. Divorce. All of that's related. It's all about business. So, what would I do? Well, at common law, it's not called a marriage. First of all, that's the basic the beginning, okay, it's called being joined in holy matrimony. I would find a preacher that would marry us without a license, and I would make up our own vows, and I would rent a hall, and I would have a sign-in sheet or a book, and both of us would say our vows to each other in front of everybody, or I'd get the preacher to do it if he's willing to do it, but if not, we'll do it ourselves. We don't need a preacher, one of these Satanist bail priests. Make up a marriage certificate and sign it with my bride with at least two witnesses. And make an affidavit, attach a, the copy of the certificate and a sign-in list from the book showing that there was hundreds of people there and record everything as a package in the county recorder's office. That's what I would do. This is what I did with my son. And so the point I want to point out here is that, first of all, it's, it's recorded. And uh, let's get in closer. And then the text. I said a lot of things in there, but the, the important stuff is in red. Um, it's with great pleasure I announce the birth of my son, who will be known as Hunter Pierre Fern during his life here on Earth. And Hunter Pierre Fern is not a citizen of the foreign United States, but he is an Arizona citizen. And in due time, when he comes of age, he will take his rightful place as a member of the American sovereignty. Be it also known uh, by all that an attempt was made by criminals to register my son, Hunter Pierre Fern, as a United States citizen to secure him as collateral for the fictitious federal debt. But it was rejected on the Arizona State Certificate Worksheet, a true copy of which is attached and incorporated herein by reference. And so, um, the point being is that, is that it? Yes, that's it. So I recorded that, and the interesting thing is, is that I was working at U.S. Airways at the time, and I wanted to put my son on the company benefits, and they wanted a birth certificate. And so I took this down there, and they used that, and they put him on the company benefits, no problem. If you have children, the state can steal them. Civil rights under the 14th Amendment are for federal citizens and not state citizens. Federal citizens as parents have no right to the custody of their infant children except subject to the paramount right of the state. So, let's learn some more about these divorce courts. And this is taken from Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. Citation, a summons to appear, applied particularly to process in spiritual court. The ecclesiastical courts proceed according to the course of the civil and common laws. And so, um, and then if you go down, uh, the next site is Black's Law Dictionary, 2nd edition. Citation, this is also the name of process used in English ecclesiastical probate and divorce courts. To call the defendant or respondent before them. And they're citing, that's a cite from Blackstone's commentaries. And also Stephen's commentaries. In personam, in rem, um, so they're so a judgment or decree is said to be in rem when it binds third persons, such as the sentence of a court of admiralty, on a sentence on a question of prize or a decree 
of nullity or dissolution of marriage. Okay, so again, divorce court is admiralty, and that's what these ecclesiastical, all these ecclesiastical courts are admiralty. There's a contract. That's taken from uh, Rapchier, Dictionary of American and English Law, Volume 1, 1883 edition, page 639. All marriage are contracts, okay? And that's why it brings in the admiralty, okay? Remember at the very beginning, it said that the state has the uh, plenary jurisdiction over marriages, okay? Plenary is military dictatorship. Admiralty is military dictatorship. Admiralty courts have jurisdiction over contracts and torts and other special cases. U.S. Supreme Court. At common law, the wife and minor children are the property of the husband and father. It is, however, true in all common law countries and has always and consistently been held that the wife and minor children take the nationality of the husband and father. That is common law doctrine. So, again, the, the bottom line is, is, do you want common law or do you want their kangaroo courts? It's up to you. In the censuses in the 1800s, you will see that the uh, uh, a husband listed his property, and it was the wife and three sons and two daughters, etc., etc. Okay, so that was all considered property, and that's common law. They understood it in the 1800s. How come people are so clueless about it today? This is Deuteronomy 24, 1 to 2. This is your answer right here. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. That's the answer. Common law has all the answers. Why do you go to these bail priests? So what I would do is I'd make up a notice and declaration of divorce, a bill of divorcement. And it doesn't have to say much. All it has to say is, Mary Jane Smith, I hereby divorce myself of you. You're free to go and marry another man. That's it. Under penalty of perjury, notarize it and record it with a counter recorder. And it's a done deal. That's all it takes. When you do your own bill of a divorcement, then it becomes res judicata. If she goes and files a divorce on you, then it's already decided. The bail priests do not have jurisdiction. I put them into a stopper, serve them with some documents, and tell them they don't have jurisdiction. And I'd file a criminal complaint. If they go and proceed anyways, then I'd file a criminal complaint. You know, there was a guy in Florida that I helped this with. He had custody of the children. She wanted the custody. And um, she filed a divorce, or she, he knew she was going to file a divorce. So uh, I gave him the, uh, uh, the text, and uh, he filed it, and, um, and then he went and um, um, served it on the court. And the interesting thing is, is that uh, the, uh, um, the judge, or no, the attorney, okay, her attorney um, was trying to drag him into court. And I told him, don't give him jurisdiction. Don't go in there. And um, what happened is, uh, I think they did a motion to, uh, to uh, get him to appear. And the judge denied it. Okay, the judge didn't even, once this thing was filed in there, the judge, you know. But that attorney kept on. And I don't know, he, I lost contact with him, so I don't know whatever happened. But, um, but yeah. So the judge was working on his, uh, once, once he'd filed that thing and, and it was res judicata and noticed the court, then that, it's decided. It's over. And, uh, but that attorney kept, kept uh, see these bail priests again. Okay, that judge was a real judge. Okay, they honored their oath, or at least did at the beginning there. I don't know whatever happened. Jurisdiction, so jurisdiction's everything, okay? You gotta understand that you put them into stopple and tell them they do not have jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is everything, okay? Jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. Jurisdiction once challenged cannot be assumed and must be decided. 
lack of defense of lack of jurisdiction over the subject matter may be raised on even on appeal okay and any time they deny due process which any admiralty proceeding is going to deny due process automatically by definition they lose subject matter jurisdiction However late his, this objection to jurisdiction has been made or may be made in any cause in an inferior or appellate court of the United States, it must be considered and decided before any court can move one further step in the cause, as any movement is necessarily the exercise of jurisdiction. U.S. Supreme Court. Once challenged jurisdiction cannot be assumed, it must be proved to exist. There is no discretion to ignore that lack of jurisdiction. Where jurisdiction is contested the, bur contested, the burden of establishing it rests upon the plaintiff. Okay? So again, if she files divorce, she's the plaintiff, right? So she has to prove jurisdiction. The burden of proving jurisdiction rests upon the party asserting it. Court must prove on the record all jurisdiction facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. When acting to enforce the statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. Courts administrating or enforcing statutes do not act judicially but merely ministerially, but merely act as an extension uh, as an agent for the involved agency, but only in a ministerial and not a discretionary capacity. So the point being is, is that the judge is bought and paid for. Okay, it's a kangaroo court. And so, in any divorce court, I mean, that's there's a statute. It's a divorce statute, and um, um, and the judge is bought and paid for. But they still have an oath, and they still should understand that. And with that Florida case that this this guy that contacted me was was dealing with, uh, that judge obviously understood that because he denied that motion of that lawyer. Um, and um, but I don't know whatever happened eventually. It is the accepted rule, not only in state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes as a ministerial court for an agency. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. A clerk masquerading as a judge is not competent to do anything judicial like issue orders or warrants. Okay, so these these clerks, a clerk masquerading as a judge is operating in his private capacity and has no immunity. Okay, ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. Oaths, all oaths must be lawful, allowed by common law or some statute. If they are administered by persons in a private capacity or not duly authorized, they are quorum non judis and void. And that's uh, uh, Coke and the Institutes and the Laws of England. That's like the 1500s. That's cited in Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition. Officers of the court have no immunity when violating a constitutional right for their deemed to know the law. Judge loses his absolute immunity from damage actions only when he acts in clear absence of all jurisdiction or performance of an act which is not judicial in nature. So, you know, these are all things that you can, you know, when you challenge jurisdiction, you point that kind of stuff out and just let them know that I am going to be through your immunity like a hot knife through butter. <laughs> When enforcing mere statutes, judges of all courts do not act judicially and thus are not protected by qualified or limited immunity. A kangaroo court. Okay, it's a kangaroo court. It's a show trial. That's these bail priests again. A term descriptive of a sham legal proceeding in which a person's rights are totally disregarded and in which the result is a foregone conclusion because of the bias of the court or other tribunal. No sanction can be imposed absent proof of jurisdiction. Where there is no jurisdiction, there is no judge. The proceeding is as nothing. Such has been the law from the days of Marshall Sayer. And that's citing a Supreme Court case, uh, Brad, uh, um, Bradley versus Fisher. It's also citing Coke, 10 Coke 68. Um, uh, avoid judgment is one which from its inception was a complete nullity and without legal effect. Okay, so uh, there's the clerks masquerading as judges issue void judgments. And um, so you have to, uh, uh, 
you know, again, it's a void judgment. If you want to, I have a whole video on void judgments. I would suggest you watch it. It's just called Void Judgments. After 11 years, Carl Lentz, okay, he's got a YouTube channel and he's or got YouTube videos. I'm not sure about a channel, but he's certainly got a website and he's got lots of information online. After 11 years, okay, he filed a one-page lawsuit to get his property back, okay? CPS stole his son at birth, okay? After 11 years, Carl Lentz got his property back, okay? It is never over until you say it's over, okay? Always remember that. It is never over. He has... Carl Lentz has YouTube videos on the website that talk about this and other things. If you have even a hint that your wife is going to drag you before one of these bail priests, and make, uh, go ahead and make up a bill of divorcement and get it notarized and record it with a counter recorder. If she files for divorce, then it's already decided. It's res judicata. And do not give the bail priest jurisdiction. As far as your sons and daughters are concerned, okay, they're not children. They are your property. Carl Lentz did not even call his son. He didn't call his son his son. He had a picture. And he said he required his property and he showed a picture. He said, I require my property and he showed the picture. That's my property. I want my property. And he got it. The end justifies the means of satanic. These people are Satanists. Okay, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness. Okay, these people are Satanists. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel and make merchandise of him or selleth him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. That's Deuteronomy 24 and 7. That's the prison industry. Okay, all of those people in prisons were sold into prison. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Give me liberty or give me death is a phrase that Patrick Henry uh, coined after he witnessed a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. Okay? That's these Satanists. Okay? That's exactly what these people are all about. These people are Satanists. Okay? This is coming from the crown, from the bitch, and, and from the pimp. Okay, and you know who I'm talking about with the pimp, don't you? The Pope, okay, the pimp. By which also he went and preached in the spirits of prison, uh, and because they're all going to hell. And it shall come to pass in that day, the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in prison, and after many days shall they be visited. It behooves every man who values liberty of conscience for himself to resist invasions of it in the case of others, or their case may, by change of circumstances, become his own. Thomas Jefferson. If ye love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may our posterity forget that you are ever our countrymen. And nobody could say it better than Samuel Adams. When shall it be said in any country of the world, My poor are happy, neither ignorance or distress is to be found among them. My jails are empty of prisoners, my streets of beggars, the aged are not in want. The tax is not oppressive, the rational world is my friend, because I am friend of its happiness. When these things can be said, then may that country boast of its constitution and government. Well, we have absolutely nothing to boast about here. The jails are populated, we have, it's, it's called prison planet. You know, Alex Jones calls it prison planet. Well, you know, there's more people in prisons in America than in any other country on the planet. Okay? So the, we have these Satanist code enforcers running around populating the prisons. The streets are full of beggars. The aged darn want, and the taxes are oppressive. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, the people be not warned of the sword come and take any person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hands. And, and so this is my effort to make sure that I'm found innocent on judgment day, that I am found guilt, guiltless. 
and either you're part of the problem or you're part of the solution, you are now a watchman. And I hope that you're found innocent on Judgment Day as well. Circulate this video far and wide. Other videos that I've published, I've got over 230 videos I've uploaded. Uh, this Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments, Bar Members 1 and 2, Unidroit, Martial Laws Here, Quasi-Contracts and Roman Civil Law, De Facto Courts, All Courts are Ecclesiastical Courts, D.C. Courts in Texas, Jurisdiction. And there's a lot more, okay, this is only the beginning. Copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I, I am, and this actually, this last paragraph is for all the Satanists uh, revenue officers uh, operating in their private capacity. Um, that think I'm getting some privilege or benefits, you can put your privileges and benefits up your rectal orifice. Uh, donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. If you found this useful, then you need to pay it forward. And if you don't know what pay it forward means, then watch the movie. Send me your success stories. We need success stories. Um, um, I have people that contact me all the time, and sometimes it works, and sometimes, you know, it depends on the corruption in the local area, okay? That's really what it comes down to. But send me, when you have a success, send me a success story, please. Uh, my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profile is Sovereign Living. Um, my Facebook community page is deleted because of censorship. I deleted it because I got tired of their censorship. My private group, Sovereignty International, is being deleted because that's how you hurt Facebook. My Yahoo private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. My Google private group is called Administering Your Public Servants. And so I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I hope you get something out of it. And um, I hope you have a real nice day.